welcome everyone to our, our Mass of the Palm Sunday celebration for our parish, St. Anne Catholic Church, but also for all souls. Father Carl is with us in this as well, and we'll have Father R.G. also uh, doing the homily today. Uh, because of the COVID-19 situation, we are uh, recording this for you to be part of in a, uh, a removed way, but we would like to be able to give you the palms at some point. And so we're going to bless the palms before Mass because we're doing what's considered the third option or the abbreviated option for Palm Sunday, and it assumes that the palms have already been blessed. And so what I'm going to do is use the blessing prayer from Form 1 for our palms, and then we'll have a break after that and begin Mass itself. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, sanctify these branches with your blessing, that we who follow Christ, the King of exalt in exaltation, may reach eternal, the eternal Jerusalem through him who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our entrance antiphon. Six, Six days, days before the Passover, when the Lord came into the city of Jerusalem, the children ran to meet him. In their hands they carried palm branches, and with a loud voice cried out, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. O gates, lift with high your heads. Grow higher, ancient doors. Let him enter the King of glory. Who is this King of glory? He, the Lord of hosts, he is the King of glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you who have come in your abundant mercy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you were scourged for our sake. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you suffered crucifixion for our sake. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you died for our sake. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who is an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering, and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. 
A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue, that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear, and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard, my face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? All who see me scoff at me. They mock me with parted lips. They wag their heads. He relied on the Lord. Let him deliver him. Let him rescue him if he loves him. My, my God, God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Indeed, many dogs surround me. A pack of evildoers closes in upon me. They have pierced my hands and my feet. I can count on my bones. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? They divide my garments among them, and for my vesture they cast lots. But you, O Lord, be not far from me. O my help, hasten to aid me. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? I will proclaim your name to my brethren. In the midst of the assembly, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, give glory to him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, and coming in human likeness, and found human in appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him, and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Christ became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. <clears throat> the Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. One of the twelve, who was called Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What are you willing to give me if I hand him over to you? They paid him 30 pieces of silver, and from that time on, he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the disciples approached Jesus and said, Where do you want us to prepare for you to eat the Passover? He said, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, the teacher says, My appointed time draws near. In your house I shall celebrate the Passover with my disciples. The disciples then did as Jesus had ordered and prepared the Passover. 
When it was evening, he reclined at table with the twelve. And while they were eating, he said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me. Deeply distressed at this, they began to say to him one after another, Surely it is not I, Lord. He said in reply, He who has dipped his hand into the dish with me is the one who will betray me. The Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. Then Judas, his betrayer, said in reply, Surely it is not I, Rabbi. He answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed on behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, from now on I shall not drink this fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it with you new in the kingdom of my Father. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, this night all of you will have your faith in me shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be dispersed. But after I've been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him in reply, Though all may have their faith in you shaken, mine will never be. Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples spoke likewise. Then Jesus came with them to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took along Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to feel sorrow and distress. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch with me. He advanced a little and fell prostrate in prayer, saying, Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. When he returned to his disciples, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, So could you not keep watch with me for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing a second time, he prayed again. My father, if it is not possible that this cup pass without my drinking it, your will be done. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open. He left them and withdrew again and prayed a third time, saying the same thing again. Then he returned to his disciples and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Behold, the hour is at hand when the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, my betrayer is at hand. While he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a large crowd, with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests and the elders of the people. His betrayer had arranged a sign with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him. Immediately, he went over to Jesus and said, Hail, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus answered him, Friend, do what you have come for. Then, stepping forward, they laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. And behold, one of those who accompanied Jesus put his hands to his sword, drew it, and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, Put your sword back into its sheath. For all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call upon my Father, and he will not provide me at this time, um, at this moment, with more than twelve legions of angels? But then how would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say that it must come to pass in this way? At that hour, Jesus said to the crowds, Have you come, as a, come out as against a robber with swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I sat teaching in this temple area, yet you did not arrest me. But all of this has come to pass, that the writings of the prophets may be fulfilled. 
Then all the disciples left him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus led him away to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the high priest's courtyard, and going inside, he sat down with the servants to see the outcome. The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain false testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. Finally, two came forward who stated, This man said, I can destroy the temple of God and within three days rebuild it. The high priest rose and addressed him. Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I order you to tell us under oath before the living God whether you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him in reply, You have said so. But I will tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has blasphemed. What further need have we of witnesses? You have now heard the blasphemy. What is your opinion? They said in reply, He, he deserves, deserves to die. die. Then they spat in his face and struck him, while some slapped him, saying, Prophesy for us, Christ. Who is it that struck you? Now Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. One of the maids came over to him and said, You too were with Jesus the Galilean. But he denied it in front of everyone, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. As he went out to the gate, another girl saw him and said to those who were there, This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. A little later, the bystanders came over and said to Peter, Surely you too are one of them. Even your speech gives you away. At that, he began to curse and to swear. I do not know the man. And immediately a cock crowed. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus had spoken. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and began to weep bitterly. When it was morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. They bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, his betrayer, seeing that Jesus had been condemned, deeply regretted what he had done. He returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned in betraying innocent blood. They said, What is that to us? Look to it yourselves. Fleeing the money into the temple, he departed and went off and hanged himself. The chief priests gathered up the money, but said, It is, it is not lawful to deposit this in the temple treasury, for it is the price of blood. After consultation, they used it to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. That is why the field, even today, is called the field of blood. Then was fulfilled what had been said through Jeremiah the prophet. And they took the 30 pieces of silver, the value of a man with a price on his head, a price set by some of the Israelites, and they paid it out for the potter's field, just as the Lord has commanded me. Now, Jesus stood before the governor, and he questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. And when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he made no answer. Then Pilate said to him, do you not hear how many things they are testifying against you? But he did not answer him one word, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, the governor was accustomed to release to the crowd one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they assembled, Pilate said to them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas? or Jesus called Christ. For he knew that it was out of envy that they had handed him over. While he was seated on the bench, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with that righteous man. 
I suffered much in a dream today because of him. The chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas, but to destroy Jesus. The governor said to him in reply, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? They answered, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. But he said, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Let Let him him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he was not succeeding at all, but that a riot was breaking out instead, he took water and washed his hands in the sight of the crowd, saying, I am innocent of this man's blood. Look to it yourselves. And the whole people said in reply, His blood be upon us and upon our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. But after he had Jesus scourged, he handed him over to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus inside to the praetorium and gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped off his clothes and strew a scarlet military cloak around him. Weaving a crown out of thorns, they placed it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, Hail, King of the Jews! They spat upon him and took the reed and kept striking him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him off to crucify him. As they were going out, they met a Cyrenian named Simon. This man they pressed into service to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, they gave Jesus wine to drink mixed with gall. But when he had tasted it, he refused to drink. After they had crucified him, they divided his garments by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept watch over him there. And they placed over his head the written charge against him. This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Two revolutionaries were crucified with him, one on his right and the other on his left. Those passing by reviled him, shaking their heads and saying, You You who who would destroy the temple and and rebuild it in three days, days, save save yourself if you you are the Son of God God, and and come come down down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him and said, He He saved saved others. He He cannot cannot save save himself. So he he is the king of Israel. Then let let him come down down now on the cross now, and and we will believe him. He trusted in God. Let Let him deliver him him now, if he wants wants him. For he he said, I I am the Son of God. The revolutionaries who were crucified with him also kept abusing him in the same way. From noon onward, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, This This one is calling for Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran to get a sponge. He soaked it in wine and, putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. But the rest said, Wait, Wait. Let Let us see see if Elijah comes comes to save him. him. But Jesus cried out again in a loud voice and gave up his spirit. And behold, the veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, rocks were split, tombs were opened, and the bodies of many saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming forth from their tombs after his resurrection, they entered the holy city and appeared to many. The centurion and the men with him who were keeping watch over Jesus feared greatly when they saw the earthquake and all that was happening, and they said, Truly, this this was the Son of God. There were many women there, 
looking on from a distance, who had followed Jesus from Galilee, ministering to him. Among them were Mary Magdalene, and Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was himself a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be handed over. Taking the body, Joseph wrapped it in clean linen and laid it in his new tomb that he had hewn in the rock. Then he rolled a huge stone across the entrance to the tomb and departed. So Mary Magdalene and the other Mary remained sitting there, facing the tomb. The next day, the one following the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember that this imposter, while still alive, said, After three days I will be raised up. Give orders, then, that the grave be secured until the third day, lest his disciples come and steal him, and say to the people, He has been raised from the dead. This last imposture would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, The guard is yours. Go, secure it as best you can. So they went and secured the tomb by fixing a seal to the stone and setting the guard. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, this weekend we celebrate Palm Sunday. In the old rite, before the liturgical uh, changes of Vatican II, the reading of the Passion of the Lord is greeted with complete silence. And I don't know, Father Carl, if you could remember this. Before the reading of the Passion of the Lord, there was complete silence. And even the concluding, um, concluding acclamation, the gospel of the Lord, was omitted. In times like this, I believe the most eloquent response to gospel reading, to this gospel reading that we just heard, is silence. During that time, the, the homily was even omitted. Back in the days, after this reading of the Passion of the Lord, just because we find ourselves in this state that we just want to meditate on the words that we just heard. Very powerful words. The Passion of the Lord, right? And any, any homily, even the best of the best homilies, will just be a distraction to the words that we just heard from our gospel. But again, when I was reflecting on this gospel and when I was preparing for this Palm Sunday, I thought to myself, we could always use some guidance in our meditation too. You know, we don't want to be like little Johnny. And I want to share a story right here. Little Johnny was failing his exams when he was still at the public school. And his parents decided to transfer him to a Catholic school. And at the end of the year, little Johnny came out top of his class. So the parents wondered, why? What happened? What changed him? So they asked little Johnny, and then little Johnny's response was, well, when I first came into the school, when I saw that guy hanged on the cross, I thought to myself, they're pretty serious right here. And I don't want to take any chances. So that's why I did my studies. But again, my dear brothers and sisters, 
The passion of the Lord, the crucifixion, just like little Johnny, it's not meant to scare us. But it is an invitation for us to reflect on how Jesus saved us. How Jesus became one with us. And for this, I want to invite you to reflect on these three things this weekend. I know I'm, I have become famous of giving out three things to reflect on uh, during weekends. And in my um, live Q&A with Father RG on one of the weekdays, um, one follower um, asked, in your daily Mass, you didn't give us those three things. And I said, well, it is a daily Mass. I only do it on weekends. I'm sorry. But again, this is a weekend Mass. I will give you three things that you could reflect on. The first thing is, in our celebration of Palm Sunday, the people were welcoming Jesus as, his, as their Lord and King, right? And what I want us to reflect on from that is how are we welcoming Jesus into our own lives? What are the things that we need to set aside in order to make ourselves worthy of welcoming Him? This Palm Sunday, we celebrate this year after year. And then we renew our commitment also year after year. We make those promises during this time of Lent that I want to give up this. I want to work on this. After a couple of weeks, where are we right now? Where are we in our spiritual preparation so that we could welcome Jesus worthily in our lives? So that's the first one. Let's go back to ourselves and really ask ourselves, what are some of these things that I still failed to do? What are some of these things that I still need to work on or to double my efforts just so I could become the Christian that God wants me to be? The second thing that I want us to reflect on is this. Jesus, in his sufferings, felt like us. When he came to us, he experienced like what we did, right? And that's why the cross, God, why have you forsaken me? We hear those words. And in our responsorial psalm, we heard it too. God, why have you abandoned me? And those same words, we hear it again right there. That Jesus is suffering. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He felt like us. He felt real pain. In this time of distress, this time of great anxiety and unrest in our community, let us be comforted of the fact that Jesus feels us. Jesus knows what we're going through. Jesus know what we're feeling right now. And be sure of the promise too, that he will always be there for us. Because that is a promise that he continues to fulfill even to this day. And I know a lot of us here in the room and probably you in your houses right now could attest to this, that Jesus still manifests himself into our lives. Be comforted of the fact that Jesus knows our sufferings. Jesus knows our troubles, our heartaches and pains. And he will always be there for us at those times. The third thing that I want us to reflect on is this. Wherein Jesus invites us to reflect on what really transpired at that moment when he suffered and saved us of our sinfulness. And the very thing that I want us to reflect on this is this idea that, I, that I've gotten in my readings um, a couple of years ago. 
This theologian argued that every time we sin, we crucify Jesus. Every time we sin, we crucify Jesus. It was that act that saved us of our sinfulness and continues to save us of our sinfulness to this day. And that's why it is good to remind ourselves that that cross right there, it's not meant to scare us, but to remind us that this is a symbol of our salvation, but also a challenge too to renew our lives, to change our ways, just because. And I really agree to this, that every time we sin, we crucify Him. Every time we lie, we cheat, every time we, um, every time we judge others, every time that we are unkind, every time that we are uncharitable to one another, all those things that we do, that are not in accord with what God is asking of us. We crucify Jesus. And so my dear brothers and sisters, this week, and let us take this as a challenge to renew ourselves, to renew our lives, so that we could become, one, worthy of welcoming Jesus into our lives. And the second is to be comforted of the fact that Jesus is there in our struggles, in the difficulties that we experience. And the third is, every time we sin, we crucify Jesus. Amen. Of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten God made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for, for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was the incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and he rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, and who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. Knowing that our glory is compassionate, we now turn our whole hearts to God. For the church, that God will transform our fears into hope, selfishness into love, and deaths into new life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to forgive that we may have the courage to forgive freely all who injure us, just as God has forgiven us. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of the elect and candidates, that God will deepen their desire for the Eucharist and fill them with love through the Holy Spirit. Let us pray to the Lord. 
Lord, hear our prayer. For all emergency personnel and healthcare workers, that God will strengthen their spirits and help them honor the life of each person they assist. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are experiencing small death in their relationships, health, or employment, that God will sustain them, guide them through this painful time, and help them grow into new life. Let us pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. Merciful Father, you gave us your Son as mediator, who suffered and died for our sins. Listen to these prayers we have offered through the same Christ, our Lord. Amen. 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 At this time, we then prepare the altar and offer our gifts. But obviously, since we are not having Mass with a community, but a private one, I'd like to just offer this invitation for you to consider how you are able to give into your own churches, whether it be St. Anna's Prisoners or our, our All Souls or St. Joseph in Roseburg or wherever you might be. Uh, our churches do need your help. I've been so amazed and so grateful for the donations we've received during this most difficult time. So I know this is a time of great difficulty, and every donation is a sacrificial offering. So I want to thank you all for that. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For with your goodness we have received this bread we offer you, fruit to the earth and work of human hands, who have become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For with your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, who have become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. God, Holy Spirit, and contrary heart, may we be acceptable to you, Lord. May our sacrifice in our sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Lord, wash away my iniquities and cleanse me of my sins. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for all our good and the good of all his holy church. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that, though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by the sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We live up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. 
Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent he suffered willingly for sinners, and accepted unjust condemnation to save the guilty, his death has washed away our sins, it, and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We'll be praying Eucharistic prayer number three if you wish to follow along. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created, created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, and graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said a blessing broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith when we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. And therefore, o Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Anne, and all, with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth. With your servant Francis our Pope, and Alexander our Bishop, Peter his auxiliary, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you, 
In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To all our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all the glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we now dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 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 The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace by a, a nod or a smile. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. 
body of Christ. Amen. Amen. Nurse with these sacred gifts, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that just as through the death of your Son, you have brought us to a new hope for what we believe, so by his resurrection you may lead us to where you call, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I want to thank you today. It's our altar service and Juliana, our reader for the day. Father Carl, thank you for being with us. Father R.G., for your wonderful homily. Appreciate that. Uh, Brian Suda has been our videographer extraordinaire. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Brian. <laughs> and I want to thank also Paul Wilson for being our sacristan this day. Uh, I want to also let you know, as this is Palm Sunday weekend, what about the palms? Now, if you kind of connected with us a little late when watching this video, you may not have caught, but we did bless the palms, and they are now in our vestibule. So on Sunday, so whenever it is you're watching this, I don't know when that is, this is Saturday night when we're uh, filming this, but on Sunday morning, noon to 2 p.m., you are welcome to come by the church and we will personally give you some palms, however many you need, you just kind of drive up to the loading zone, roll down your window, and there you go. Now, if that time does not work for you, you can still receive the palms because at that time we will then no longer have the personal folks doing that, but then we'll just place them on the table with like a rod over them so they don't fly away. So you can come at any time of the day on Sunday, and then we might even have it out during the week, depending on if there's anything left. So be aware of that. And see if there's anything else I need to announce. Our triduum will be offered. Father R.G. is so graciously going over to Roseburg to lead the triduum for the folks at St. Joseph, along with Father Manuel, who will come celebrate, and Father Cletus. Uh, and so thank you so much for doing that. And Father Carl, you're going to be joining us here for part of the triduum or actually the Triduum, Holy Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil. So what are we doing? What's our time? So 7 p.m. will be our Holy Thursday Mass. Good Friday will be 7 p.m. as well. And our Holy Easter Vigil will be, not 7, but 8.30 p.m. Uh, the liturgies will be remarkably and uniquely abbreviated because, especially the Easter Vigil, we are not entering in the Catech of the Elect or the candidates this year at this time. Uh, we don't know exactly when that will be, but it will be sometime after the, the stay home, save lives quarantine here in our state is over. And so if you are a, an elect or a candidate, please know of our prayers wherever you may be, because you may be also in that situation where you have the expectation of being received into the church in Easter Vigil. Uh, I'm afraid that's not likely happening. So just know that as we go forward, 
we are with you as you uh, have an anxious and desire to, to go forward. There's a suffering, you know, Father RG talked about suffering. And we too also suffer with you in a different way. So please know of our prayers. Um, and I think that's about it. Oh, Father, is there anything else I need to share? Same thing for our candidates and, and uh, elect. So for our soul, all souls perish, the same thing is going on in Holy Family and Glendale. So if you're part of those communities, same situation is going on with them. Roseburg is the same thing. The whole diocese, Archdiocese of Portland is doing that. The times uh, for this, we will just let you know when we find out what the day will be, how it will be done. And the Archbishop is not sure himself because we have not been released from our bondage of this quarantine. And so I just want to invite you as we go through these times, as Father Arju was saying, it is very difficult. So if you're not sure uh, what to do, rewind this video. Go back to the homily. Remember his three, his three points and start putting those into practice. I want to thank you again for that. The Lord be with you and, and with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Look, we pray, O oh Lord, on this your family for whom our Lord Jesus Christ did not hesitate to be delivered into the hands of the wicked and submit to the agony of the cross, who lives forever and ever. Amen. 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 And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Yes, thank you, Father Carl. And so at the end of all of our Masses, and our solemnities especially, we uh, specifically, we then offer our prayer of St. Michael, the Archangel. We'll do that here shortly. And then following that, the prayer for an act of spiritual communion. And we'll have those words up on the screen for you if you're not sure how to say them. So together, St. Michael, Saint Michael the, the Archangel, Archangel defend, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and the snares of the devil. May God be with you, can we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by thy power, God, thrust into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world for the ruin of the souls. Amen. Amen. And together, the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since, Since I cannot at this moment receive, receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen.